These might look like normal icicles, but they are not. These icicles are number icicles, and you can tell that because if you look really closely, you can see a number. And we can skip count down the icicle. We're going to be skip counting by one. So here's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, you guys try one. Skip counting by one, starting with zero. Yes? One, two, let's see. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's try another one. Skip counting by twos on this one. This looks tougher. Okay, who wants to try? Okay, go ahead. Let's see. Eight, 10, 12, 14. Yeah, you're right. Over here. Three, five, seven, nine, 11. Yep. Yeah. And one more. Oh, let's try this one. Oh, skip counting by fives. Can you guys do that? Okay, let's try. So we're at 15. What would be next? 20? Okay, yeah. 25, 30, 35. Good. Well, this wasn't so hard whenever they're hanging on the tree, but what happens when they fall on the ground? Well, here's an icicle that's fallen on the ground, and we have to skip count by ones. Who wants to do this? Okay, 7, 8, 9, 10. How many people agree? Everybody. Okay. Well, ha! You're wrong! Look at that! 7, 6, 5, 4. The problem is, whenever an icicle falls on the ground, you don't know which side is up. So you don't know if it goes 7, 8, 9, 10, or if the top part of the icicle is actually the 4. And it goes 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you see, that's the problem. You don't know which side is up. So, here's a problem. And here are some hints, and we're going to, first of all, try filling up this blue icicle. Who wants to try? Okay, go ahead. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Good. And now let's try the yellow one. Okay, go ahead. 10, 11, 12, 13. Good. And let's try the green one now. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Good. Okay, so you can see these puzzles, how they happen. They happen because icicles fall on top of each other, and sometimes they fall in crazy patterns. Look at this. So how are we going to solve this? Let's start with the blue one again, and we're going to go... Yeah, we can solve that. And now, why don't we solve the orange one at the bottom? Okay, who wants to do that? Good. And how about the gray one? And we've got a 12 and a 14 on the gray, so what would go 13 in between? Okay, and at the top, 11, right. Okay, now let's do the orange one. We've got a 17 and a 16, so it looks like it's falling. 15, 14. And the yellow one, why don't we do it? We've got a 14 and a 12. We've done that, something like that before. 15, 13, 14, 13, 12, yeah. And lastly, the green one. Good, so we've solved this ninja hex. Okay, teachers, if you want to photocopy this, there's your page to photocopy. There's going to be a lot of um, possibilities uh, for photocopying in this um, presentation. So you'll find them all in the PDF document afterwards. Here's a sharp star. All of the red and blue have to be uh, skip counting by one. and you, the kids have some flexibility here. They can either create, um, uh, each point can be a 2 or each point can be an 8. So they've got two options for every point of this star. Okay, and the same for the skip counting by 2. There will be two possible answers for each point of the star and for 5. You can either have 0 on each point or 30 on each point of the star. The kids will figure that out. This one is called Pagoda, and um, it has a solution like this. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's the easy part. But now the kids have to kind of take a leap of faith, some of them. How are we, how are we going to get up to that 4? Um, they're going to try and Eventually, they'll figure out 2, 1, 0 is right, because then they can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then again, they have to figure out, do I want to decrease or increase to connect the 3 to the 8 on the left side? And they'll figure out that this is the right way to go. 
followed by that. Okay, here are two other similar problems. And hole in the roof uh, gives a lot of flexibility. So if you have a child that you really want to let them explore, then this is it. Um, and now we go on to a tougher one, which combines uh, skip counting by twos and skip counting by fives and ones. And now we don't tell the children, we don't tell them um, for each icicle, we don't tell them which skip counting they need. So, for example, uh, on the left, the purple icicle, well, that's going to be skip counting by ones because I give them the hint 0 and 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. But for the other ones to connect back around the whole um, shard of glass back again to the 0, I don't tell them which numbers they have to use. And this, so this is significantly tougher. Um, and there's the solutions for you. I've just given you the, all of the points of, the, um, of these shards of glass. And you can reconstruct easily based on, based on those points, what skip counting you'll need. Uh, these are the same shards of glass, but with different hints. And they have a totally different set of solutions. And here they are. Blunt star gives uh, even more flexibility. Here, I don't give them any hints. They just have to use 1, 2, and 5 to solve for the blunt star. And they can do it any way they want. They can use any numbers they want. Um, here are some possible solutions. And there's going to be um, an infinite number of solutions. But here are some possible ones. And what you'll notice is with this solution, um, going around the central pentagon, you'll notice that they chose 5 and 1 skip counting going clockwise, and 2 and 2 and 2 going counterclockwise. Now it's no coincidence that 5 plus 1 is equal to 6, and that 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6. Um, I won't say why. You can figure that out if you want, but it's not important, but it's a, it's a that will always be true. The number for, for this problem, it will always be true. The number of counterclockwise, if you add up, 5 plus 2 is 7, and 5 plus 1 plus 1 is 7. So any solution for this problem will have that property. So it's a quick way to check if the kids are on the right track. So 2 plus 2 going counterclockwise, and 2 plus 1 plus 1 going clockwise. Here's another similar one. Penta Ninja. <laughs> I have fun with the names here. Teapot House. On this worksheet, two of the puzzles have got solutions, and the last one is impossible. I love exploring impossible problems with students. And not all problems in mathematics are solvable, and that should be reflected in your class, starting at grade one. Uh, here, the top right one is the one that's impossible. Don't tell your students that. It also might be interesting to show your students, um, just some of them, the ones that you think are interested in this kind of thing, show them uh, a problem that's guaranteed to be impossible. Just tell them this one is totally impossible, but it's beautiful. And it might be fun for them to experiment with it, just see what they come up with. 